Bibles this morning to Acts, the second chapter and the 17th verse. I've been talking about the creative power of God, that God is a God of creation, and he puts his capacity to create in us as his children, as his people, the same principles and concepts and work and uh, resources that God used to create us and create all the things around us he put in us. And so we've been talking about how to tap into our God-given creative capacity. And we found out that dreams and visions are God's way of creating. And he gives us the capacity to create through dreams and visions that God communicates with us through dreams and visions. The only difference between a dream and a vision is a dream happens when you sleep. Visions usually happen when you're awake or cognizant, conscious. Dreams are a result of the unconscious man's sleep, but the vision is usually a result of a conscious person having and seeing a reality that is birthed out of the spirit, from the spirit. We know that the Bible said it's all those things that are unseen that created the things that are seen. That the spirit realm is here before the natural realm. And everything that comes out of the spirit, it was spirit first, and then it became natural. Everything we have today was a thought in the mind of God before it became a physical reality. The seats that you're sitting on were a thought in somebody's mind before they became a present reality. Some of the things 50 years ago that people imagined would happen are happening now. If you gave a kid a rotary phone today, it would look like a monster that he would not or she would not even know what to do. They wouldn't even know where to put the fingers, what to dial. You know, some of y'all, you know, old enough to remember, we had to, we had to dial the phone, right? We never imagined that we would be walking around with a whole computer, a whole computer in our hands at the touch of a button. You can be anywhere in the world. You can communicate with anybody in the world just by a touch of your finger. Who would have imagined? And when it was thought of, and when they was doing these space shows, we would say, oh, that's crazy, that's, that's fantasy, that, that's science fiction. Well, some of the science fiction has become science facts, right? In a few years, we're going to be like, beam me up, Scotty. Right? Because when we see the power of the human imagination and its capacity to bring about results that would seem impossible, that's why, again, I go back to the Tower of Babel. God himself said, anything they would imagine, they'll be able to do. Every problem that God has spoke to about mankind has dealt with, in some ways, the imagination. Because in their imagination, they were continually wicked. So God was concerned with what was going on in the imagination because the imagination is the seat of creation. If you can think it, you can have it. If you can hold it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. And most people don't understand that the results of their life are things they created through their vision or their thinking or their ability to understand and see something uh, in the realm of the spirit that now is manifesting in their life, whether it be good or bad. See, the imagination is not bad. And it's not good, it's what you make it. 
Your imagination is like an empty canvas. You paint the picture on your imagination that you want to see. Some people use it for good and others use it for evil. But the fact of the matter is that doesn't take away from the fact that it is the seed of creation and it is one of the most powerful gifts that God has given to man. Are you with me? Now, in Acts, as we get to the celebration of Pentecost, I want to morph this into some conclusion about this season of the church when we celebrate Pentecost when we celebrate the fact that the Holy Spirit came and the church was birthed in the earth and the children of God, the 120, were in the upper room where the Spirit of God came down and filled the house where they were sitting and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance, which is one of the core pillars of what we know as the Pentecostal church. So, I want to look at that again today. Acts 2, 17. And it shall come to pass, in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young, here it goes, your young men shall, shall. See visions. I want you to underline that. Your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Right? And on my servants and on my handmaidens will I pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. So then, he says... He says here that Luke reveals to us the function and the intent of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believers. So Luke, Luke raises this issue of the purpose and the experience of Pentecost. While so many Pentecostals focus on tongues as being evidence of receiving the infilling and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, ever since we've been in Pentecost, the argument has been, if you have the Holy Spirit, will you speak in tongues? Some people say you will, some people say you won't, some people say you don't, right? Uh, it's been a big argument. It separates people in their belief systems about what the role of the Holy Spirit is, right? Do I speak in tongues or not? Do I... Is that a, is that's a sign or evidence that I'm filled with the Spirit of not. But let's look at it a little closer, if you don't mind. Um, so, we, we, we talk about speaking in tongues as being evidence of the infilling and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but many uh, neglect the other ways in which the Holy Spirit manifests himself in the lives of believers. Notice he does not just show an evidence of tongues, but he also says those that have been impacted, filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, you can notice that he manifests his voice and his power in several ways. Notice there are three main aspects to what took place on the day of Pentecost. Number one, prophecy. Everybody say prophecy. Number two, visions. Come on and say visions. And number three, dreams. So, so notice now, when the Holy Spirit comes, now he's going to make his people prophetic. Number two, he is going to bring about visions and dreams. Right? So I want you to understand. And he talks about prophecy. Now, prophecy is just simply uh, speaking forth 
a revelation that comes or knowledge or understanding or wisdom that comes from the, the spirit or from divine inspiration. The Holy Spirit's job is to make us oracles of God through which God can only speak to not only speak to his sons and daughters, but speak through his sons and daughters. So God, the Holy Spirit, gives us access to his ability not only to speak to us, but to speak through us, right? And so we have to understand that he just doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to talk through us. How does God communicate uh, to and through us so that his plan and his nature may be revealed. Because while many people are secure in the fact that the Holy Spirit is present within them because they speak in tongues, they don't seem to be aware that this is not the only manifestation of the Holy Spirit given in Scripture. Many people who say they're filled with the Spirit and speak in tongues demonstrate no real evidence of any capacity to understand the creative power of dreams and visions. Uh, stick with me for a minute because there are a lot of folk that's just hot. I speak in tongues more than you all. I know I got the Holy Ghost. But they, they do not have any evidence that they have a vision or a dream. If visions and dreams is God's way of communicating with the believer, then if we have the power of the Holy Spirit, shouldn't we be giving birth to dreams? Shouldn't we be able to dream? Shouldn't we be able to have a vision that comes from the inspiration of the Holy Spirit? People that speak in tongues all day but don't have a vision got a problem. People that speak in tongues all day and don't have dreams have a problem because you have to understand uh, the scripture does not say we will perish without tongues, but the scripture does say we will perish without a vision. Oh, y'all ain't going to get this. He didn't say you'll, you'll die if you don't speak in tongues, but he says you'll, you'll perish if you don't have a vision. My People, not other people, my people perish for a lack of what? A lack of what? Vision. So you're speaking in a lot of tongues, but you don't have no vision. You're speaking in a lot of tongues, but it does not equate to a dream. Right? So the power of what God wants to do through us comes through a vision. It comes through a dream, it comes through the ability for God to infiltrate our imagination and birth something into our spirit that will manifest in our life. So there's a reality of the spirit that comes to us. So many believers seem to lack vision. The ability, the ability to tap into the creative spirit of God. The ability to see a new reality for themselves and others. How many believers do you see every day that claim they're in a relationship with God but do not have any evidence that they have a vision for their life, that they have dreams that uh, they are infused with uh, that will change their life. How many of them are still stuck in their present reality? Because the only way to get out of your present reality is to see a new reality. The only way to see a new reality is to have a vision. Vision gives you access to what is not already present in your life and show you what your life could be. Oh, y'all ain't going to talk to me. At the end of the day, visions and dreams give you access for the things that are possible in your life that may not already be present in your present circumstances. So if, if you don't have vision, if you don't have the ability to tap into God's creative process, the ability to see a new reality, then that means you're stuck in your present reality. And man, that's a terrible thing to do. Many of us are stuck in our history. 
we're stuck in the past and we're limited by what we see in our present. We have no capacity to tap into a higher power, a higher level, to see something, a new reality that God wants to show us, that we are capable of seeing, that will free us from the one that we're complaining about now. Instead of complaining about your mess where you are today, why don't you see something new for yourself and start chasing that instead of living in the mess you got? It's easy to sit here and complain about what you don't have and where your life has been and what somebody did to you in the past and how you've been hurt. You can spend all day doing that mess. Or you can spend your time dreaming. Or you can spend your time creating a new vision for your life. Because a vision, a new vision will give you a new life. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. How does it become new? It doesn't come new because you're still thinking about what you went through in your past. It comes new not because you're stuck in your present. It comes new because you're excited about your future. How do you get excited about your future if you have no vision that shows you what it can be? I don't want to talk about where I am. I want to talk about where I'm going. I don't want to talk about where I've been. I want to talk about where I'm going. I just had a vision. I was laying on the beach. It was sandy. A breeze was blowing by. The sun was glistening on my toes. Oh, I, oh, let me come back. Let me come back. I, I, I got caught up in the, and my vision almost took me out of church. See, your vision takes you beyond physical boundaries. It takes you beyond physical limitations. It, 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 it robs you of or it takes you away from the hostage uh, that you've been to your past. That's why it's important that you work on your vision. That's why uh, in Joshua, God told Joshua, he said, meditate. Uh, we don't meditate. He said, meditate day and night. Don't get distracted, but keep your focus on my word. Don't look to the left or right, and you will make your own way prosper. Hello. God does not have to make you prosper. He gives you everything you need in order to prosper. Speak in tongues, but remain locked and stuck in a limited belief system. You just, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, and you more broke now than you was when you first started. <laughs> you sick of that and you were <laughs> you running around the show and running around <laughs> and life still jacked up how long is that? <laughs> and you just think you somebody I speak in tongues more than you <laughs> you can't even go to the store and speak <laughs> you, you, hey, you 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 quickening and jerk. No, 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 no. Just speaking in tongues. And, and, and guess what? You got less now than you ever had before in your life. Why? Because you talk. See, see we, we focus on the gift that lets us talk. We don't focus on the gift that makes us listen. That's what's wrong with you. You talk too much. Yeah, you, you just talking, ain't you? At some point, you got to sit back, shut your mouth, and listen to hear, and look to see. Oh, y'all out here, I'm listening to hear. I'm looking to see. I'm tired of where I am. I need something new. Behold, I do a new thing. In other words, I can't stay stuck in the past if I'm consumed with my future. Paul, Paul said, I'm forgetting those things that are behind me, but I'm pressing towards what? I got a goal. I got a vision. There's a prize in front of me. And when I get consumed with the prize in front of me, I forget what's behind me. 
I'm so consumed with where I'm going that I can't stop to think about where I've been. Can I get a witness in here? I'm so focused on where I'm going, I can't even hardly remember where I've been. Yes, I've been through some stuff, and yes, I came through some mess, but I'm so excited about where I'm going that I cannot be held back by where I've been. I used to be a drug addict. I used to be jacked up. I used to be broke. I used to be messed up. I used to be in a mess, but I see a new reality. I see something better for my life, and I'm so consumed with where I'm going, I can't think about where I've been. I wish somebody would say thank you. I'm so excited. Is anybody here excited? Wave at somebody and tell them I'm so excited about where I'm going. I can't think about where I've been. You tell me where you've been and I'm going to tell you where I'm going. Y'all ain't going to have me. You remind me of your past and I'm going to talk to you about my future. And some of you don't know how to talk to the devil because every time the devil come to tell you about where you've been and how no good you are and what you messed up, you ought to tell the devil you might be right, but guess what? I ain't got time to think about where I've been. I'm too busy working on where I'm going. Can you wave at somebody as I get ready to get out of here and tell them I'm going somewhere? I'm going somewhere. And every time I think about it, depression starts to leave. Oh, y'all ain't hear me. Every time I think about where I'm going, my old faulty state, joy jumps in my heart. Hey, y'all ain't going to just start thinking. If you ain't going nowhere, you're, you're going to be messed up. But if you're going somewhere, if you can see yourself in a better place, guess what? Joy will come up in your belly. Peace will start overflowing your soul. The peace that passes all understanding. Oh, y'all ain't going to hear me. When you start thinking about it, Come on, somebody. When you start looking forward, it's like when you get ready and, and you don't work all year and you're looking forward to a nice vacation. Uh, you can get into a bad day, but then when you start talking about and thinking about where you're going, the day doesn't go so bad because you know something is coming in the way. Uh, look down the road. Something is on the way. I'm getting ready to go to another day. No, oh, come on. Why are y'all going to sit here and act like you crazy and act like ain't nobody never done nothing for you. I'm working on my future. Yeah, they speaking in tongues, but they don't know nothing about a vision. They speak in tongues, but they remain locked and stuck in a limited belief system. They speak in tongues, but they got a faulty mentality. This leaves them practicing religion instead of a lifestyle that is evident of God's spirit and God's presence. They brag on being saved and righteous, but they have no real evidence of radical change and increase, healing, prosperity, creativity, power, favor in relationships. Oh yeah, they brag about being saved. They can jerk, they can shout, they can cross them over, get them back, they can they hick them a shire, but they ain't going nowhere. Amen. Hickamashai, same hoopty for 50 years. Hickamashai, the, the, the snatch man still looking for him. Hickamashai, this is the third house they've been kicked out of. But they hicking and shying. I, no, no, no. Many complain about the fact that they don't, they don't hear from God and become disillusioned by their lack of connection with the Almighty. But Jesus said in Matthew 13, he said, who have ears to hear? Let them hear. And the disciples came and said, why are you going to speak to them in parables? He answered and said, because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but unto them it is not given. You got a right. You got a ticket to your future, but I can't share it with them. I know somebody, I don't know about you, but to them, it is not given. I'm not a them, I'm a you. Uh -huh. For you will know the mysteries of the kingdom, but to them, 
it is not given. For whosoever have in him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever have not, from him shall be taken away even that which you have. So can I paraphrase it for you to make you understand what Jesus is saying? Because most of us don't read this text forever and we still don't know what it's saying. I'm going to tell you what he said. He says, for whoever hath vision and dreams to him shall be given and he shall have more abundance. Did y'all get that? I'm going to say it again. To him or her that hath, what does he need to have? Visions and dreams. To him that have vision and dream, they'll be having even more. And not only will they have more, but they'll have abundance. But whosoever does not have dreams and vision and access to the kingdom, from him shall be taken away even what he has. You see what I'm saying? He says, when you don't have access and identity with the kingdom, if you don't know how to use your kingdom resources, then you will lose what you have. Therefore, I speak to them in parable. I got to get out of here. I got to speak to them in parable because they sing, see not, they hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah saying, by hearing you shall hear and shall not understand, seeing you shall see and shall not perceive. For the people's heart their spirits of wax growth, their ears are dull of hearing, their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see, watch this, see, vision, see, see, vision, see. When you can see something, then you can hear something, right? When I saw myself on the beach, I could hear the waves. Matter of fact, I, I could not only hear the way, felt like I felt a little something wet hit my foot when I said, yeah, I felt something. Yeah, because when you, yeah, because when you see right, you can hear right. Oh, come on. Because your vision is so powerful. Can, can I talk to you? You know you got real good vision when the vision you see also allows you to hear. Good God Almighty. Not only can I see it, but I can hear the birds chirping. I can see, but I can hear the wind blowing. Yeah, I heard that. See, I was sitting there then. I told you every now and then it was so hot I needed a little breeze to hit me. So I heard the wind brush across my brow. Y'all ain't with me. And then he said, with their heart, they should understand and should be what? Changed. Ooh. If you want to be changed, get a good clear vision. If you want to be changed, see yourself doing something you've never done before and believe that it can happen and guess what it will change your life because he's not talking about being saved he's talking about being converted a whole lot of folk got saved they said ggg but they ain't never been converted and guess what because they if they get converted if they really change healing comes and he said, blessed are people who got eyes that can see and ears that can hear. Jesus forewarns us of the tragedy of not being able to have vision, the ability to hear, see, and perceive a new kingdom and a new reality. He shows us that true change and abundance comes when our spiritual eyes, our ears and hearts are capable of receiving the revelation of an unseen kingdom and an unseen world. The inability to see a vision is the same as the inability to be converted. Why? Because vision motivates conversion. If you got a vision, it motivates you to change. You know why we couldn't change in the old church, Romaine? If you don't change, you're going to hell. See, hell, that's all they showed us. Hell, hell, hell. Every time you turn around, you're hell. We had visions of hell. We dreamed about hell. We just, we couldn't get away from hell. Every Sunday was hell, hell, hell. Guess what? That's a terrible way to motivate somebody. Hell. The only reason we ran to the altar, hell. The only reason we tried to do it, 
hell. We were scared of hell. And some of y'all still scared of hell. That's why you're here today, because you don't want to go to hell. Hell, you trying to stay out of hell. That's what's wrong with you. If some of y'all didn't believe in hell, you'd be right out there dropping it and dragging it just like you was crazy. But hell is the only thing keeping you halfway living right. Can I get a witness? See, 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 but when you have a vision, a vision will cause you to change. Change is a radical uh, change of mind. Conversion is a radical re-identification. Uh, change is a metamorphosis that takes place through a process. Uh, and when you see the vision, it will cause you to change. See, if somebody say, pay your bills, pay your bills, get your credit up, get your credit up, or you're going to jail, that ain't no motivation. But when you see yourself in a 6,000 square foot house, when you see yourself, oh, y'all, with a pool out in the back and a jacuzzi sitting on the side, when, oh, Lord, when you see yourself like that, then it will cause you to start what? Changing. You'll stop spending your money like a fool. You'll start fixing your credit. Y'all, come on here. You'll stop wasting your money. Y'all ain't going. It will change you. But the reason why many of us can't change is because we ain't got nothing in front of us that makes us want to change. You want a, you want a million dollar man and you a basement woman. No, y'all ain't going to hear me. Hey, hey, all the speaking tongues, right? You want a million dollar woman and you you are ditch digging, okay. At the end of the day, uh -huh, what you need is not a better woman, is you need a better mentality. What you need is not a better man, you need to change your mind. Uh -huh, you want somebody handsome and you looking like Sister Drag Nasty. Oh, no, it don't work like that. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. You got to change your mind. Fix your wig. Come on here. Get yourself together. Come on, somebody. Why are you trying to get something uh, that's elevated when you are still in the basement? If you want to get elevated, get on the elevator. Get your mind right. <laughs> oh, you ain't going to talk to me. You... <laughs> Don't nobody want me. And you in the store with a rag on your head with shoes look like they've been ran over for two years. Talking about, I'm just going to run to the store and get this bread right quick. And, and you run out there in your pajamas. I, I was walking down the street the other day and I saw a woman. She, her head was tied up and looked like a, a, a spaghetti strings was hanging out the top of her head and she had on a, 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 a what you call that? Spongebob pajama top and another Mitch Matt's pair of pajama pants and she had a nerve to have on some bedroom shoes with half painted toes that looked like they was cracking from the ends to the out. And I said, oh my God, whoever. And she had a baby in the baby care. I said, whoever. Oh my God! How are you gonna get? How are you gonna get somebody in the penthouse when you just walk out the house, just got out the bed at twelve o'clock? I want to understand that when you get a greater vision of where you're going, you're gonna fix some stuff where you at. Oh yeah, I, I, you gonna get up and say, I got to do better. You gonna get up and say, no, I ain't going out the house any kind of way. Come on, I'm a queen. I'm a king, y'all, y'all. I'm somebody. And when I walk out, I got to walk out with some swagger. Wave at somebody and tell them you need some swagger. Straighten up your back. 
fix your hair, straighten up your wig, wash your clothes, put some deodorant on, and go get some good de- uh, uh, perfume and stop walking around stinking. Say yeah, I got to go now. Vision then will cause you, if your vision is strong enough, then your changes will be long enough. When your vision will motivate you to a radical change that will take place when we see with our spiritual eyes, when we hear with our spiritual ears, and when we understand with our spiritual heart, a person is blessed not when they have stuff, but when they are tapped in. Good God Almighty, I might not have what I want in the flesh right now, but I'm tapped in. It ain't come yet, but I'm tapped in. I know as long as I don't get distracted by a bunch of haters and bottom feeders and as long as I keep myself tapped in, good things are coming, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shout glory in here. Good things are on the way. My tomorrow is going to be better than my today and my future is brighter than my past I don't know who I'm talking to in here but I want you to understand when you get a real vision it'll change your life shout glory in here when you get a real vision you'll stop eating at McDonald's you'll stop taking dates to Golden Corral shout glory in here but when you get a real vision you'll see yourself sitting at Ruth Chris eating a cowboy ribeye a baked potato and a nice salad and by the way send me one of those desserts shout glory in here when you get a vision you'll see yourself Can I talk to somebody? When you get a vision, you'll move out of coach and start buying you a first class ticket. Look at somebody, wave at somebody and tell them I'm getting ready to move out of coach and I'm getting ready to move into first class. Shout glory. Look at somebody, wave at somebody, and tell them I'm moving out of coach and I'm moving into first class. Shout glory. They got more room in first class. They got better food in first class. You got more leg space in first class. Yeah, I see myself in first class. I belong in first class. Shout glory. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I feel like first class. I can see myself in a new level. Shout glory. I'm dreaming. I'm wing dreaming. I got vision. I see myself. It ain't here yet, but I see myself. I'm calling those things that be not as though they were shout glory in here shout glory shout glory I see myself y'all ain't gonna talk to me going places I've never been before I see myself having opportunities I've never had before why I got a vision Shout glory. I can see it. Can anybody see it? Can anybody see it? 
I see it. Shout glory. Tell your neighbor. I see it. It's getting clearer. Shout glory. It's getting better. Yeah. I can smell it. I can hear it. I can feel it. I'm on my way. Shout glory. Shout glory. You can stay here if you want to. But I'm going to leave you right here. Wave at somebody and tell them I got places to go. I got people to see. I got things to do. Shout glory. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. It ain't even entered into the heart of man. What the Lord has prepared for me. Yeah. It's already. It's already done. It's already done. If I can see it. It's already done. If I can hear it, it's already done. If I can feel it, it's already done. Eyes have not seen. Shout glory. Shout glory. Shout glory. Shout glory. Yeah. Yeah. Shout yeah. Yeah, wave at somebody and tell them I'm getting happy just thinking about it. I feel like shouting just thinking about it. Joy just thinking about it. When I look at what God is getting ready to do in my life, I can't help but get happy. I can't help but tell them thank you. I can't help but say glory. I can't help. Listen, Habakkuk says, stand upon my watch. They set me upon a tower and I will watch to see what he'll say to me. Listen to the terminology. He said, set me up on a tower. I'm going to watch to see what he'll say unto me. Because when I hear it, I can see it. He says, when I hear it, I'm going to watch. Somebody shout, watch. I'm trying to get out of here. He says, the Lord answered me. He said, write the vision. Make it plain. Put it on the table that they may run that readeth it. I like this part. He said, for the vision is for a point of time. He said, but the end it shall speak. The vision will not lie. I feel like shouting. How many know the vision won't lie? Friends will lie. People will lie. But the God I serve, he cannot lie. Shout glory. The vision will not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come. Wave at somebody and tell them it shall surely come. I'm trying to get out of here. But if you got a vision, can't nobody block it. Can't nobody stop it. Surely, 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 surely it's coming to pass. Surely, God's going to do it. Surely, surely, I'm sure it's coming to pass. Shout glory and it will not tarry. Behold, my soul is lifted up. It is upright in him, but the just shall live 
by faith shout glory Habakkuk says the vision will elevate your mindset he said watch and receive he said make the adjustments when you're approved write the vision down impregnate your words with what you see make sure the vision is clear for others to receive it remember that the vision has an appointment I'm trying to leave here but when you look at your neighbor and say neighbor the vision has an appointment shout glory in here I got it on my calendar yeah go to your calendar and write it down my vision has an appointment shout glory shout glory shout glory I tried to see the doctor right away but he wouldn't see me but he said hold on wait a little while I got your appointment and I hear God saying don't get discouraged just hold on because your vision has an appointment am I talking to anybody it ain't came to pass but it shall come to pass it ain't here yet but it shall come to pass be not weary in well doing cause in due season you gonna reap if you faint not shout glory in hell I don't know who I'm talking to but as I get ready to leave I want you to wave at somebody and tell them my vision has an appointment and in the fullness of time everything God promise is coming to pass shout glory I've been through some dark days and I've been through some stormy day but I hear the master saying come on up a little higher shout glory it's time for promotion it's time for upgrade it's time for another level shout glory I see it I see it I see it can anybody see it I see it I see it it's in my vision shout glory I got eyes my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord shout glory I'm trying to go but before I go I need you to wave at somebody and tell them I see it is in my soul I see it is in my spirit I see it is on my mind I see it shout glory Shout glory. Oh, yeah. I can see it. Clouds might be in the way, but how many know behind every cloud the sun will shine again? I'm not looking at the clouds, but I'm looking for the sun. Wave at somebody and tell them I'm not looking at the clouds. I'm looking at the sun. I see the sun. The S-O-N. Shout glory in hell. Everybody standing as we're ready to leave this place. This is why you can't praise God. Hello, somebody. And that's why you can't praise God. You wait for somebody to give you a vision. 
but when you got a vision it'll make you praise him you're not praising him for where you're at you're not praising him for where you've been you're praising him for where you're going I wish I had about five people that would just praise him because you see where you going if you can see it don't wait praise him Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I want to tell you that there's a better future. And those of you that are in depression, and those of you that are hurting today, the reason why you're hurting because you're stuck in the past. But you know what'll make you get your praise on? You'll start looking to your future. Mama might be gone. That's why you ought to be looking to your future. Because the Bible says you'll see her again. Y'all ain't here. Instead of looking behind you, you ought to be looking in front of you. You ought to be saying that I see a brighter day. I see a better day. And it's just around the corner. I want you to pray this prayer with me. If you're not saved, if you're, if you're there and you're hurting and you just can't see. See, people commit suicide because they are locked in a place. They have no vision. That's why it's dangerous to live your life without a vision. Because when you lose vision, you lose hope. When you become hopeless, death can take you easily. That's why you got to keep a vision. That's why it's something you see by the spirit has to be greater than what's hurting you in your present. And I want you to pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross. I believe that he rose again. I ask you, Jesus, come into my heart. Restore my eyes. Restore my ears. Let my heart perceive you in a brand new way. I love you today, Jesus, and I thank you for saving me. I pray for you today. Lord, touch them now. People all over this room who have eyes but have not seen a new reality. People that are hurting because they can't see beyond themselves. But Lord, if we could focus and see a new reality, paint a new picture, get motivated to change and to look forward instead of looking behind. Lord, that we spend time cultivating a vision instead of gossiping and creating division. And Lord, if we spend more time dreaming and looking to the future we would be motivated to move to another day so father we thank you for it now in jesus name